but what does it even matter, right? Compassion. Compassion means God's compassion. These are representatives of God, representatives of God's compassion. The highest form of compassion is that, like, some person might offend someone just because the, the hope of helping that one person was worth more than manipulating a whole bunch of people to love you or to create more love. As what you can see as perceived love, knowing that making that one in line person or creating that Satori in that one person is words. I'm just gonna say words right there because I can go into all these analogies and I can go into different depths in, into each subject or into each small thing that you can find. These small points that you can find where everyone's just going, I don't care. I hate this. A lot, a lot of uh, satsang, people who are given satsang are learning that there's no such thing. Unless the people understand the tradition of it, then there's no such thing as it. It's really just a person sitting in a room with other people. So that anything could happen. It could be a discussion or it. You know, you could get up off the, off the chair, you could sit on the floor, you could just sing the whole time in it. There's no such thing as, as a satsang anymore, to, well, to the Western culture. And these people in the Western culture are all saying, I'm giving this satsang. Not true. Unless you understand the tradition of it. But a lot of these Western masters and stuff, people don't even respect them. People are disrespecting them all the time. When I'm watching their their videos, the people who are, who are the what can per be perceived as the, as the disciples are disrespecting them all the time, and these these Western masters are taking it as like, oh, I, I don't care. When they're coming from Western culture, part of Western culture is like competition. The, the, the problem is that the perceived Western master is Jesus, who, who's going to tell you, you can move that whole mountain. If you become enlightened, you can move that whole mountain. With, this is the type of thing this guy is telling you. So the way Western culture sees it with all this fantasy land crap that's all, all around. They're saying, yeah, you think you're, you think you're a Buddha you, and you can't even move that. You can't even move that whole mountain. Well, you masters can't move that whole mountain either. You guys are stupid. Thinking that Jesus is the master. You guys can't even move that whole mountain. And this guy, this is what this guy is telling you to do. And you're, you're saying this is our master. He's telling you to move a whole mountain. You're saying, yeah, that's our master. You can't move a whole mountain. You can't turn, you can't turn water to wine without it fermenting. There's no historical proof of any of this stuff, but you guys just say faith, and you guys get offended when you when when someone questions your faith, which is why you guys have all that faith, so, you can, so that as a general consensus, no one can question you as a general consensus, but you as an individual, is all, everything that a sage is, Jesus, Jesus cares about you as an individual, and you think he cares about you guys as a general consensus. You think he, he wants you to forget yourself. You think he doesn't care about you, yourself, 
You think he only cares about you caring about himself? Are you crazy? He cares about you. Just as every sage cares about you. That means, it doesn't mean you're a sage because you care about this false person. This person who's being false in front of you. Just because you care about that person's mind. That, so that doesn't make you a sage. That doesn't make you a guru. That doesn't make you a spiritual person. That doesn't make, doesn't make you an enlightened person at all. I don't think that you guys went into Nirvana and, and it told you to do, to do that type of thing. Come on, you guys. You guys are eating your Frosted Flakes. You guys are eating your Cheerios. Your damn... Whatever you guys are, are eating. Your Pop-Tarts. Just because they told you that's what a breakfast is. They told you that breakfast is eggs and toast. They told you that breakfast is cereal. So that's why you're eating all that stuff for breakfast. Because that's what they told you what is right. You guys are still probably doing that too. When the mind doesn't exist. Naturally, a breakfast is supposed to be something that will wake you up. So like an apple. Which is sour. Which is sour. True. Versus your 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 when sleeping the mind state. Exists, understanding and then something and light, which is like greens or leaves, false. which is fundamentally when what you, you need. Green. Reality. And then like on you. energy, so like grains and stuff. When you don't understand, you depend on reality. So that's like oatmeal, that's porridge, that's you, that lentils, real, potatoes. Real. At least they when got that right. On reality, that which is real becomes false. When you depend on reality, everything is false. For one, you become desensitized to everything. everything because you become unaware true. with everything. That's why I preach awareness all the, the time. Sage doesn't give rise or every sage preaches reality. awareness all the time. And reality awareness means no mind. It means you're aware of what's happening without your mind and because both his blinding mind you as a veil in front of what's there, in still, front of you. It's the difference between eating milk and realizing every time that this is squeezed from a cow's breast, the and say, these frosted flakes nothing has a are just created with own. with uh, that. It's not Act. there's no real so much health Don't in like question. frosted flakes and all this crap. They're just giving you sugar. When you question, you're wrong. When you're deluded, like it's not the best thing for you to eat. It's not the best grain, but it's what, it's what has the best taste to your mouth. The same way meat doesn't necessarily have the best taste to your mouth, but the sauce does. That's why McDonald's meat tastes so good because they put those spices in it. It's not really the meat that you, that you taste when you eat a McDonald's burger. It's the spices and the texture of the meat. You just real, you just desensitize with it in, in, in your mouth. You say this is meat and it tastes good. But it's really the spices that you're tasting. The spices and the cheese and the ketchup. Even the bread is, is so sugary. McDonald's bread is so sugary. But it tastes good. And it's cheap. Whereas Five Guys, they put nothing in it. They put no spice in their, in their meat and you can't even taste it. It doesn't taste like anything. All you taste is the toppings. <laughs> it's crazy. But you get a lot of the meats. So you get you desensitize with it. And you say, I'm eating a lot of meat. I'm eating a lot of meat. I'm eating a lot of that protein. I'm eating a lot of that meat. 